So I'm, uh, I'm Bob Desimone. I'd like to welcome you to the annual McGovern Institute Symposium. This year's symposium that has the, had its uh, topic selected by Merida Jezieri, who also uh, put together the, the whole program. And I know he has a goal for the symposium, and by the end, we will all have an internal model of what an internal model is. <laughs> Uh, my role is only to uh, thank uh, all the speakers for uh, coming, thank the audience for, for being here, and to thank the McGovern staff who uh, organized the whole event. This is an all-hands-on-deck kind of uh, event, and I know they worked very hard to make this a smooth-running event. So I will turn it over to Merdad to tell you more about this. Good morning, everyone. It's, uh, I'm, uh, Really, really pleased with the um, sort of symposium lineup of speakers we have. Uh, probably most of you know most of the speakers. Uh, the, uh, the initial point of the symposium was some time ago when uh, Bob suggested that maybe I should think about the next annual symposium for McGovern and uh, what, what would be a topic that I'll choose if I were to, to organize one. And I thought for a while and um, I think one of the m sort of one of the more elegant uh, conceptual frameworks uh, that has entered the field of neuroscience in the past several decades uh, are ideas that come sort of in an inter interdisciplinary form, bring together uh, concepts from engineering, from uh, sort of theoretical modeling and experimental work, uh, and and one of the more promising ones among the various possibilities that are out there is the concept of internal models, partly because it's ambiguous. Uh, but, uh, but hopefully, the point of the symposium would be to actually think a little bit harder about this ambiguity and whether we can bring together uh, some, some sort of a, a common understanding that will bear on models and mechanisms across scales. And, um, you know, I want to say, uh, a little bit about the speakers will, will mostly talk about the, the ideas around internal models, although I, I have my, uh, my thoughts that actually um, even among the speakers, some will have uh, you know, views against very strong uh, sort of uh, claims about what internal models are and what they're used for. It's, it's not an easy concept to embrace, especially if you want to you know, go, go a little bit deep about what, what you mean. Uh, but the idea is that the, 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 why it's valuable, it's fairly straightforward. You know, a, a lot of things that we do in all sorts of behaviors that we engage in uh, involve, you know, several main conceptual problems that thinking about internal models comes to help. One is ambiguity. You know, the same sensory input can have multiple valid interpretations. You know all of this famous... Uh, I don't even know where the source of it comes from, this, but this class, uh, this, this dress illusion, blue, blue, black versus gold, uh, you know, like this, that's the same input we all see, and we have very different interpretations of it across the, the, the population. And perhaps the reason is, internally, we think about sources of light and all sorts of other things that must, must have been in certain ways <coughs> so that the interpretation would make sense for one brain in a certain way and for another in, another, you know, in a different way. And it goes across scales. It's not just for visual illusions of that kind, uh, you know, from, as Nate's uh, uh, talk will, will indicate, you know, the simple act of whether knowing a, a sensory input is coming from the outside or from my movements of my own body is a, is a fundamental ambiguous problem that the brain has to solve. Uh, and that requires some understanding internally of what it means if I move my own hands. In other words, the sensory areas might have some sort of a model of the consequence of the motor command. Similarly goes for uh, another concept like ambiguity, which is uncertainty. It is fundamental that you know, all the internal activities inside our brains and also from the outside, the, the information has, has various forms of uncertainty associated with it. And it's fundamental to the way we behave that we make inferences about the state of the world based on uh, not perfect information. And the way to do that, again, is to have some knowledge about the statistical structure of the world. The world might be a particular brain area that another brain area wants to make use of. So if area B wants to listen to area A, 
and if area A has some variability associated with it, well, the only way area B can make sense of it if it has some understanding of the language that the, the area A speaks. Uh, and this also goes fundamentally uh, 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 sort of into the notion of dynamics. As soon as we think about a dynamical system and we behave in a, in a, in a heavily dynamical environment, then we are dealing with situations where the smallest forms of noise and variability will propagate into a dynamical system in, to generate more and more erroneous kind of a consequences and states. And therefore, as a, as a good engineer, always you will need some sort of a feedback or control mechanism to, to, to harness the dynamics. And as soon as you want to do that, then the control mechanism needs to have an understanding of the way the system can go awry or what are the sources of noise in the system. So all of these concepts bring together the need for some part of the brain to have some knowledge about how another part of the brain operates. And that's in the broadest sense the, the idea behind an internal model. Now, uh, the language that we often apply to think about internal models, uh, at least from a sort of a computational perspective, just because ambiguity, uncertainty, and noise in dynamics all are well captured by the language of probabilities, it's an easy formulation to bring uh, into sort of our uh, world of understanding to, to, to learn something about these notions of models. But there is a, there is a tension there. Uh, you know, just as a, uh, an apple falling from the sky, we might have an equation that explains <coughs> its dynamics, it doesn't mean that the apple actually implements that equation. And the same way as an experimenter, when we come up with an equation to explain a particular behavior, that doesn't mean that the brain actually implements that exact same equation. And that's the tension between having models to explain a behavior versus what is it that the neural circuits actually implement. And that sits really high uh, at the bridge between uh, algorithmic modeling concepts and neural circuit motifs. And what I hope to invite all of you to think about as the speakers go through their presentations is whether, whether the, the, the uh, knowledge so far will lend itself to building a bridge of that kind where we can link computational models that explain behavior at a cognitive uh, psychophysical level to more uh, lower level neurocircuit mechanisms that in perhaps smaller animal models have been uh, um, studied. And if not, are there ways that we can adjust either the way we formulate the models or the way we interrogate the neural circuits which can bring about a common language between the two because it's a fundamental um, um, sort of a disconnect that still exists between models of cognition and circuits of, of um, uh, sensory motor system in lower animal models. And uh, with, with that in mind, uh, we, uh, I just want to uh, tell you the, the sort of the uh, plan for the day is that we will have um, Half of the speakers, five of the speakers, will speak uh, during the morning. There will be a break. Uh, I, I, I think you all have the program. There will be a break in the middle. But the, the morning talks are more geared towards neural circuit um, lower level mechanisms. And then after lunch, there will be another five talks with another break. And the talks in the afternoon are uh, sort of slightly more bent towards uh, system level descriptions, computational principles, and uh, cognitive level um, sort of representations of internal models, again, with all in quotes. Um, that, the, uh, and and the, at the uh, end of the day, we'll have a panel discussion uh, with, you know, um, some of the experts on both ends of the aisle, hopefully engaging each other in, uh, in, in ways that, you know, We'll, we'll either we'll learn there is really no connection between what a uh, sensory motor lower level um, understanding of, a, of an internal model and what we call a cognitive internal model, or maybe there are linkages and there are circuit motifs that we can think of that could even be used to understand more high level aspects of internal models. And uh, without, uh, without further ado, I'll pass on the podium to our first chair, Mark Harnett.